aromatization is a it's admittedly an unfamiliar word, but it refers to this process of converting androgens <clears throat> to estrogens. After all, all estrogens were once androgens. You cannot get to estrogens without first passing through the androgens. And to do that, to actually make that conversion, you need this enzyme called aromatase, which is why we've turned it into a verb and say that we have this process of aromatization. Ovaries are good at aromatizing androgens or converting testosterone to estrogens, if you will. Now, as the theca cells and the granulosa cells are reduced in number with menopause, there is less androgen production and thus less aromatization happening in the ovaries. In this stage of her life, most of her androgens actually are now coming from, from her adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands become the primary source of androgens in her body. Now still, they need to be converted to estrogens. And this is where the fat tissue be, uh, comes in. Because in the postmenopausal woman, the fat tissue is the main source of estrogens. Now, it's, it's not making them from scratch. Remember, the fat cells are simply pulling in the androgens, and in this case, the androgens that are coming from the adrenal gland, and converting them into estrogens. And then most of the androgens that are getting converted into estrogens are, happen, it, it, are doing so in the fat cells rather than the ovaries where, they used, where it used to happen. So her fat cells in the female with menopause are very, very important in this process. This just to, just to remind you, the overall topic is us talking about the endocrinology of adipose tissue. And here it is very, very relevant because the adipose becomes the primary source of estrogens in the postmenopausal body. So generally, and you can take this to the bank, it's pretty reliable. Any of the hormones that are coming from the subcutaneous fat are going to be good hormones, metabolically favorable. These are going to be hormones that improve insulin sensitivity, reduce inflammation, and promote satiety in general. Now, some of those things can go sideways, as we'll talk about more in a moment. In contrast, visceral fat tends to be releasing hormones. And again, I'm including pro-inflammatory proteins in this because they do meet the classification of a hormone. They're generally going to be higher from visceral fat. So visceral fats, typically, whatever it's releasing is generally going to be less favorable. Not completely. These are generalized statements, no doubt. Now, one other comment on the cytokines it, that I, I am inclined to revisit, which is um, how do we define a hormone? What is a hormone? How does a cell talk to another cell? Well, there are different ways, um, but if a hormone is released in the blood... If there's, a, if there's a molecule that one cell releases into the blood, and then this molecule flows through the blood and then has an effect at a cell that is somewhere else in the body, that is an endocrine signal. And therefore, based on what the way I view it, and as a specifically as a professor who teaches graduate level endocrinology, I would call that a hormone. Even though in the case of some of these one in particular that we're going to discuss, it's also called a cytokine because cytokines are the terms, it was the title given to these molecules that will activate immune processes, <clears throat> but it's still a hormone. 